but I'll ask Karen to uh, run through the the protocol for the meeting due to it being a virtual meeting. So, Karen, can I hand over to you? Yes, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, basically, then, okay. in the first instance, if everybody who is um, could everybody unmute, I'm sorry, mute themselves so that we can have um, the least amount of disruption to connections. Um, if you find that during the meeting there are connection issues and you're on camera, I would suggest that you um, take your camera off and then obviously deal with the meeting through audio. Um, I can see you all quite clearly, so at the moment there are no issues. Um, but just in case there are, we always advise everybody um, to knock the camera off as a first try to see if, if that works better. The meeting will be recorded and will be uploaded to the website after the meeting in due course. Um, there is a facility on your screen for you to, as members of the committee, if you wish to speak, you can either raise your hand for the chairman to see you um, on screen, if you're on screen. There is a chat facility as well, so you could actually write a comment in there that you'd like mm -hmm. to speak if you want to do that. And for those members who are coming in via telephone, um, obviously they'll have to try and speak through the telephone and then obviously we'll we'll deal with it through the chair. Um, but otherwise, there are other facilities that we can use during the meeting for to get your for you to get our attention. The members of the council who make be actually viewing and are not on the committee, they can also use a similar chat facility which is called questions that they'll see on their screen and again that will come in and then they can ask can they speak and that will be with them with the commission through the chair through the committee to allow them to speak so they've got that opportunity any um in relation to agenda item five we have got um speakers who have said they'd like to speak today on the matter and at that point the chairman will invite them to come into the meeting um, at, the, at the point on that agenda item. The other thing I would like to suggest as well is for people who are viewing the meeting, that when we get to the reports, the chairman will, once the reports have been considered and then the recommendations are to be agreed and approved or whatever is the case, the chairman will automatically go through the list of members on the committee and ask you to say whether you're for or against. Um, and I think at the moment, that's all I nearly, nearly, really need to say at this stage, unless you've got any further questions, anybody. OK, Chair, I will hand back to you then. Yeah, I just, one question, Karen. If any, I've got the, the control panel along on the side of my screen now. If anyone asks a question, will it automatically come up on the control panel? It'll come up on the chat facility. If yeah. any member of the committee, yes, it will. But there is a function on that facility where it says to all entire audience or just to whoever they want to send it to in the list. Yeah. So you be, care no, be careful if you want to send. The, I got the chat sorted. It's the it's the questions. Yes. If you look at if you look at the questions as well, we'll if you if it's not on your screen on my screen. Anybody who is attending, I can see. And if you can't see it on yours. I'll be able to interject and say, Chairman, okay, I have somebody fine. who wishes to, to raise a question, yeah. yeah. That's fine, just so long as we don't miss anyone. Okay, th I, um, yeah. I thank Karen then for uh, the introductions. I hope everybody will bear with us. It's the first licensing meeting done virtually, and I'll try and make it run as smoothly as possible, but uh, there may obviously be a, the odd hiccup if um, if things don't go quite go to plan, but we'll, uh, we'll do our very best. Uh, so the first... Um, Item on the agenda is apologies for absence, but I think it's probably easier if we do the do a roll call and then we'll know exactly where we are. So, um, uh, Chairman, myself, um, I'm present. Uh, the Vice Chairman, Councillor Griffiths, not present. Uh, Councillor Aviat, Councillor Charles, present. Okay. Councillor Crowley, not present. Uh, Councillor Drake, present. Councillor McCaffer, present. Councillor Moore, present. Sorry. Thank you, Anne. Uh, Councillor Michael Morgan, 
And Councillor Morgan is trying to join chair, but he's having some technical issues, so we might be joining shortly. Okay. Uh, Councillor Norman? Present. Uh, Councillor Nugent Finn? Present. Councillor Rowlands? Present. And Councillor Crowley does send his apologies, uh, Chair. Oh. Thank you, Leighton. Councillor William? Uh, present. Councillor Wilkinson? Present. And Councillor Wright? Present. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we've got the apologies and we've got the all the members uh, are present. Um, minutes of the meeting held on the 12th of February. Are members happy um, to accept those minutes as a correct record of that meeting? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Margaret. Seconder? Anyone like to just wave their hand? Rachel, thank you. Uh, declarations of interest. I believe we have one declaration of interest. Margaret? I so, declare yeah. an interest because I'm cabinet member for housing and building that's in my portfolio and I declared a planning so I will leave the meeting uh, and come back later. Okay so that's for agenda item four yes? Yes that's right. Yeah. Okay Chair, are there any I, other declarations? Sorry Karen? I just, I just wanted to come in if there aren't any other declarations of interest I just wanted to say that um First of all, I didn't say who I was at the very beginning for the recording. I'm the Democratic Services Officer supporting the committee today. And Matthew Swindell, who you heard earlier, he's the technical support during the meeting. Um, and then obviously when you get to the other items, you may want to introduce the officers um, yeah. at, at that point. Thank you. Okay, can I, Richard, would you like to introduce yourself then? Seems you're gonna be taking us through everything. Yes, good morning. I'm Richard Price. I'm the legal advisor to the licensing committee. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, so the first item on the first main item on the agenda then is agenda item four, which I'm is leaving. The... I'm leaving. You're leaving. Thank you, Margaret. See you in a minute. Uh, agenda item four then is a report of the operational manager for legal services in respect of the Vale Morgan Commons Registration Authority. Application 1, 2019, to register land at Mysa Funnan, St Nicholas, uh, I think that should be Bombleston, as a town or village green under the se Section 15 of the Commons Act 2006. And I believe um, Victoria Davidson has taken us through this report. I think you're still muted, Vicky. Yeah. Vicky, you're muted. Hi, Vicky. Sorry, Chair, Vicky's got some technical difficulties at the minute um, and she can't unmute herself. She has now. She's just liaising with um, Trevor from IT. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right okay sorry this is um uh this is reports um uh for obviously the public protection licensing committee um and it's a first stage report and it relates to an application uh reference 1 2009 uh, the application is dated the 22nd of may 2019 and it's an application to register land at mysa Fanon. Uh, St Nicholas as a town or village green under section 15 of the Commons Act 2006. Um, 
uh, essentially this this work shouldn't take very long and I'm happy to take any questions but essentially this report seeks authority from this committee to convene a non-statutory public inquiry and to make a recommendation to the council as to whether the application should be approved or refused. Um, the um, circumstances surrounding this application um, and because of the position that the council finds itself in, um, uh, which is essentially a conflict situation, what the report recommends is that um, a non-statutory public inquiry is convened to consider the applications primarily for reasons of transparency. Uh, we've got two. Um, we've got two functions. We obviously have a function as the registration authority, um, and obviously uh, our function in relation to um, uh, uh, landowner. Um, and as a result, um, it would be preferable in our view if we were permitted by this committee to instruct an independent expert uh, with legal expertise in uh, relation to determining these applications so that um, uh, a determination can be made by way of a non-statutory public inquiry uh, whether or not this land should be registered as a town and village green. Um, the application um, is before you. There's been several um, uh, objections made to the application um, in response to the representations made in support of it. Um, the individuals named on the application are supported by uh, St Nicholas and Bonvilston uh, Community Council, who've also made representations in support of the application. Um, there is, as I've alluded to, one objection from the landowner which has been received via their solicitor. Um, the um, primary objection is that the land hasn't been used as a, but, sorry, by right, um, uh, but actually used by right. But those issues really are going to be matters for um, for the inspector to uh, to determine. Uh, there is a resource implication um, in respect of um, the instruction of the independent uh, expert if that is approved by the committee and um, uh, the resource implications to the council as the registration authority um, is circa uh, ten ten and a half thousand pounds um, with some additional cost in relation to initial drafting and uh, the cost of obtaining advice at the outset um, so that is essentially um, uh, what the report relates to. It's, it's in essence, um, uh, a desire really to be able to enable the council as the registration authority to test the evidence uh, to see if the requirements under Section 15 of the Commons Act um, are met to such an extent that this land should be uh, registered as a town and village green. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you, Vicky. Um, as Vicky said, this is the first stage in this process. It's uh, the way that we normally um, handle these applications. I don't think there's any need for um, a big debate on it today. I think it'd be premature to have a big debate on it today, but I will ask members if they have any questions um, of Vicky at this point. Anyone indicate if they wish to speak? Sure. John? Yeah. Can I yeah. Come in? On behalf of people like myself, who are not totally deaf, but do lip read as well as um, listen, it would be helpful to have all the speakers, namely the officers, on screen and not members of the committee, because it, it, for me, it's I want to see the officers and the people who are speaking. I did have you on before, so I said could we have the chair on, but Vicky just went off then, and I think it would make sense for anybody who's watching this that they actually have the people who are speaking on the screen at that, at that time, like Richard's there. Um, but it's pointless having members of the committee and not the officer who should be, who's just made the, uh, the remarks. It's just a comment. Could one of the officers um, comment on that? Because I can, I can see everybody. Um, I don't know why Anne's having a problem. It does depend what device you're using, Chair. Sometimes what you'll find is if you we were at audit last night and the lay member was using an iPad and sometimes you'll only have the opportunity to see six on a screen, but the person that was speaking actually came to the front forefront 
Um, so I don't know what um, device um, Anne has actually, Councillor Moore's got, that maybe not, not allowing everyone to be seen. But um, Sorry, Anne. Okay, I've got 12 members on the screen, 12 people on the screen. It's only a point that if people are watching, the same as me, and they, they don't know the officer, you can't see them speak. And I just think that's yeah. important. So I don't that's know. Yeah. We're not going to be able to sort it now, but we we can look at that yeah. for um, for future meetings. So uh, thanks very much, Anne, for uh, bringing it up, because obviously, unless you're experiencing it yourself, you wouldn't uh, realise it was a problem. So, no, but uh, we we have more than twelve on the screen at the moment, Chair. Uh, on the screen I'm using, I've got. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I think. I know. Um, on, I don't know how it works with this, but on the um, with, with Zoom, you can set it so that the the person that's speaking actually fills a screen at the time they're speaking, and that might be useful for some people who really do okay. want to. Um, to be um, yeah, sure. Can I just come in, Chair? Sure. Yes, Steph. Um, yeah, uh, if you look at your um, the, 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 the grid, if you look at the bottom right hand corner, there's an option to enlarge. So you can enlarge the picture of the person speaking, um, particularly useful if you're lip reading. So, for example, uh, Vicky was just speaking now. You can enlarge her and you could see her very clearly. Um, so, Anne, if you want to do that, Whoever speaking, and you can set it as, as John was saying, you can set it that mode anyway. But you can click on the individual person and see their lips moving. Um, okay, okay. Oh, that's helpful. Uh, Chair, Sorry. could I also just mention that um, it does depend on sometimes the facilities that people are using, um, what they use, and the devices they're using. But for um, the law and the process for remote meetings, um, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the law says the if you can't be seen that's not necessarily the, the issue you must be able to hear and be heard so if that if those are not um complied with then there is an issue the, the fact that everybody is seen is not necessarily the issue yeah, but being heard and that you can hear is is uh, is the law yeah I, I take on board that we're you know we're compliant the way it's working we're compliant but i also take Anne's point that um you know i think some of us perhaps need to have a little play around with this again to see how these little intricacies work to make it uh, the experience as as good as possible but uh, as i say that that's probably not for today now we've we've mentioned it so can we if we can come back to the report are there any questions on the report for vicky if not i'll just for clarity i'll read the recommendations out and then i'll read those with the members names and ask them to um, indicate if they're in favor or not so uh, the recommendations are that due to the fact that the land is owned by the council, a non-statutory public inquiry be convened to consider the application. Two, that the operational manager legal services be given delegated power to appoint a legally qualified and suitably experienced independent chairperson to hold a non-statutory public inquiry to consider the application. The cost of appointing council to chair the non-statutory public inquiry and his costs ancillary thereto be met from the legal services budget. Four, that at the conclusion of the non statutory public inquiry, the chairperson shall be requested to produce a report for the registration authority, which considers the evidence submitted in support and against the application, together with the evidence heard at the inquiry, and to provide a recommendation to the licensing committee whether or not to register the land as town or village green under the act. And five, that the further report be presented to the licensing committee upon receipt of the chairperson's report following the non-statutory public inquiry in order to determine the application. So uh, members, if members are all happy that uh, they understand the recommendations, uh, can you indicate then when I call out your name if you're in favour or against the recommendations? Um, I'll, start, I'll go through the list as they are on the uh, agenda. So it starts with myself and I'm in favour of the recommendations. Councillor Griffiths isn't present. Uh, Councillor Abiot? Four. Uh, Councillor Charles? Four. Uh, Councillor Crowley sent his apologies. Councillor Drake? In favour of the recommendations. Councillor McCaffer? In favour of the recommendations. Councillor Anne Moore? In favour. 
Councillor Morgan. In favour. Councillor Norman. In favour. Councillor Nugent Finn. Chair, can I just ask what's the cost for this uh, independent inquiry coming from the uh, legal services budget? Yeah, uh, do you yeah, want me to? I should have, should have asked the question before we started this, but I think Vicky could yeah. probably. You yeah. did mention it in, the re in your. Yes, yeah. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, Councillor um, Nugent Finn, the costs to the council at this stage. Um, which covers the instruction um, to the independent um, uh, legal experts will be in the region of ballpark ten and a half thousand plus VAT. Um, it's the detail is referred to in paragraph four one of the report. Um, it's broken down, um, so I won't go through the breakdown, but essentially it covers all aspects of um, the uh, non-statutory public inquiry, including um, sitting days, so inquiry sitting days, and put the drafting of the post-inquiry report. Um, so it's 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 approximately ten and a half. It might be a little bit more than that because there's an additional charge of £150 per hour for the preparation and initial advice work. Okay, thank you very much for the clarification. I did indicate I wanted to ask prior. Sorry, Chair, um, in favour. Sorry, I, I um, is it no problem. To see? No Shout problem out loud if you, uh, if you do want to speak. Are you in favour of the recommendation? I am, John. Yes, thank you, Chair. Okay. Councillor Rowlands? In favour of the recommendations. Councillor William? Yeah, in favour. And Councillor Wright? Okay, thank you very much. That's uh, clearly um, a unanimous decision to go ahead with the public inquiry. So um, thank you very much. Lovely. Uh, Cheers. Thank you. Can we get... Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Um, can we get Councillor Wilkinson back into the onto the screen, please? And is it at this point we invite the um, representatives of the trade to join us. I was just um, talking to a colleague chairman to ask the um, Councillor Wilkinson to come back into the room. And yes, we have two um, interested parties today, Mandy Ewington and um, Mike Moore, who um, will be invited in to speak today with your approval. Um, and also we have a letter from Steve Thomas that was sent to all members of the committee yesterday. Um, and we can read that out as well, if you wish. Um, yeah, well, and I think can I, yeah, can I suggest that once uh, Kirsty's introduced the report, then you read that letter out before we go any further? I'm back. Margaret's back. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Margaret. If um, if Matthew, my colleague, could then invite the um, attendees to come in, that would be great. Um, and we could check, first of all, before we start, that um, Mike Moore and Mandy Ewington are present. Could they let us know? Hi, good morning. Mike Moore, can you hear me? Yes, yes thank you. you. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. And is Mandy there as well, Mandy Ewington? Hello? Yes, uh, good morning. Uh, I'm here. Ah, uh, there's probably a slight delay in, in um, connections in people hearing each other. Thank you both. So, Chair, I would suggest then at the opportune, opportune time when you're ready that you invite both to speak. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah, welcome, uh, Mandy and Mike, to the meeting. Um, we're trying to run the meeting as near as possible as we can to what a normal meeting would be. Um, you may need to bear with us if um, we have any technical difficulties, but I'll do my best to, uh, to steer it through the meeting. So uh, if we can start then by asking, oh, there's no declarations of interest on um, on this, I presume we asked at the start of the meeting, but just to check. No? Um, can I ask uh, Kirsty then if she would take us through the report, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, if my video goes off, 
office because I've got a bit of a poor connection, but I'll hopefully the audio will hold out. Um, right, so this report is to consider the adoption and publication of a policy on temporary screens in taxis and private hire vehicles following consultation with the trade. And the reason that we've brought this po policy to your attention today is because we've had a number of requests from the trade um, urging the licensing department to consider greater in-car safety measures to guard against COVID-19. And according to um, the Office of National Statistics, taxi drivers have one of the highest mortality rates of any other occupation in the UK. Um, as things stand, in accordance with their license conditions, um, license holders of taxis and private hire vehicles must first gain approval from the licensing authority before they can fit any screen in their vehicle. So it's obviously understandable that license holders want to put measures in place in order to protect themselves from the transmission of COVID-19. However, it's important that this must not impact the safety or integrity of the vehicle. So partition screens provide a physical barrier between passengers and drivers. However, there is currently no evidence available at the moment that demonstrates that these partitions do reduce the risk of transmission of COVID-19 infection. However, it is obviously appreciated that this could change as it's ongoing at the moment. Um, there are various different types of screens on the market. Some include um, more flexible plastic screens that can wrap around the driver and can be easily removed. And then the others are more rigid polycarbonate plastic screens that have been, you know, that can be attached by way of nuts, bolts to the seats or interior trim of the vehicle. So there are potential um, safety concerns in relation to these. The main um, ones being the potential to um, adversely affect the side airbag operation of the vehicle or any other safety features of the vehicle. Um, another concern is that it could also potentially fail an MOT test if the screen significantly reduces the movement of the driver's seat. Um, in response to some of these concerns, we've done some research, um, tried to contact leading agencies and safety experts in the field of safety and vehicle testing. Um, so we've contacted the Driver and Vehicle Standards Agency, as well as um, Myra, who provides engineering research and test services um, to the automotive industry. Um, and their responses can be found in Appendix um, B and C of your report. Um, so the, the crash for these screens um, hasn't just been a local issue, it's been a national one. And as such, the licensing expert panel, which is made up of representatives of the 22 Welsh um, licensing departments. So they set up a working group in order to produce guidance for, author for licensing authorities to adopt with the intention then of harmonizing the approach across Wales. And this policy, um, which was produced by the License and Expert Panel has also been approved by the Directors of Public Protection in Wales, the DPPW, and this is the policy that we're proposing members adopt today. Um, and this can be found in Appendix A of the report, and I'll briefly go through that in a, in a little bit. Um, so in terms of this policy, we have carried out a consultation. Um, it was sent to the Vale of Morgan Taxi Association amongst another a number of other operators and drivers. We didn't receive any consultation responses. However, um, we have been liaising as far back as June in relation to this policy when draft versions were sent out. Um, during the consultation period, I also had a conversation um, with Mike Moore, who is here today to address the committee. Um, and he advised that he wouldn't be submitting a consultation response in relation to the policy. However, he still wanted to address members at the meeting and he is here today to do that. Um, after the consultation period, we've also received a correspondence from Steve Thomas, who's the chair of the Vale of Glamorgan Taxi Association. Um, and he's advised that Mike Moore and Mandy Ewerton will be representing the association today and that he has submitted a written response um, advising members that the Taxi Association is requesting 
that members adopt the same policy adopted in Cardin with immediate effect. So a copy of Mr. Thompson's submission should have been circulated and I understand will be read out in a minute. As um, the Trade Association have um, asked for Cardiff Council's policy to be adopted, I have also um, circulated this so you should have had um, or seen sight of a copy of Cardiff's policy with the changes that have been highlighted. I am, however, today recommending that members adopt the policy produced by the licensing expert panel and the one that has been approved by the directors of public protection in Wales with immediate effect. And um, I'm also requesting that the that the decision to approve a screen for use in taxi or private high vehicles is delegated to the head of shared regulatory services to ensure a quick turnaround. So if I um, briefly direct you to the policy in Appendix A, um, if, I, if I skip to um, the general requirements of the policy, which is point, you know, starting from point 13, um, it, it, it lists all, all the things that we, that we would require in order for a screen to be approved. Um, so if I list some of the things such as point A, um, the device must be purpose built to use as a safety screen within a vehicle and must be suitable for that specific make and model. Um, B, for example, it should not wrap around the driver's seat and create a partition between the, suit, between the two seats in addition to the rear cabin. Um, C is um, ensuring that there's no additional risk. Nothing obscures it or interferes with the passenger in any way. D, um, screens must be professionally and securely fitted and maintained in accordance with the manufacturer's specifications and recommendations. E, um, devices should remain free of scratches. Um, F, screens should not impede the driver's movements or communication with the passengers. And G, screens should not impede the driver or passenger's entry or egress to the vehicle. Um, it goes on then to list the approval procedure. So in order, um, what we would propose is that in order for um, a license holder to get a screen approved, they'd first need to submit a request to license in and then provide confirmation of the following. So um, the installation is conducted in accordance with the requirements of the policy. Um, and point 18 goes on then to specify that what the license holder must do is provide the following to ensure that it does meet um say you know it satisfies our safety concerns then so point a um so they must provide certification from the installer or other evidence to prove that installation is um compliant with government and industry regulations and then the second part compliant with um eu standards and type approval and also it goes on to say that if a screen and installation should be improved by an independent product engineering testing consultancy and certification organization, for example, Myra Milbrook or other comparable body. So if there are safety concerns in relation to that screen potentially affecting the side airbags, then we could require additional testing from such a body. And then um, finally, it asks that the council reserves the right to um, require additional testing if it's if it's not satisfied that it's safe. So that's um, that's the policy and the report. And if there are any questions or anything, I'm happy to answer. Thank you, Chair. Are there any questions for Kirsty at this stage? Yes. I, well, I've got one question then, just to, to kick it off, is why are you recommending the adoption of this um, policy rather than the one that the amend, amended one uh, that Cardiff have, have gone with? Um, the, the reason that we've put the policy before you today is because it's the policy that was produced by the licensing expert panel. So with the intention of harmonising the approach across Wales, um, Cardiff decided to amend that policy that was members' choice. Um, 
we are still trying to, to harmonise the approach by using this policy, which was approved by the directors of public protection in Wales. Okay, thanks. And it, am I correct in um, thinking that Bridgend have adopted the policy, the the DPPW policy as is? Yes, they have. They've adopted it as it is. Okay. Um, Karen, would you like to read out the uh, the letter from uh, Steve Thomas from the association? Yes, by all means, Chair. Before I do that, can I just mention that Councillor Crowley has also joined, and he joined just as um, the officer was starting to present the report. So he has he will have been party to all the discuss discussion um, as well. Just wanted to okay. make that point Thank for you. the record. But yes, with regard to um, Mr. Steve Thomas has sent in um, a document that has been emailed to all members of the council and has been uploaded to the website. Um, basically, I'll start off with what you said. Thank you for the notification and invite to the above meeting. I would request that this email is read out at the meeting. I am still shielding at the moment and as my computer is very dated and has no webcam, I won't be able to go over to the AT to A to B taxi office either. We at the VOG Taxi Association have decided the committee members, Mike Moore and Amanda Ewington, will represent the trade at the meeting. However, just in case there are any problems with the connection at the meeting, he says, the association would request that the Vale adopt the same conditions that have been accepted in Cardiff and that Vale taxi drivers are allowed to put temporary screens in their cars if they so desire not only for their safety, but also for the safety of the travelling public. We would ask that you adopt this policy with immediate effect. Licensing authorities all over the country are giving taxi companies permission to put these screens into their cars. Some authorities are actually paying for them to be put in their licensed cars. This means that the companies that produce these screens are inundated with orders and as such, the Vale drivers will be well back, will, will be well back in the queue. And he's got in capital letters, the time is off the essence. We request you allow these in our cars immediately. Many thanks, Steve Thomas, Bill of Glamorgan Taxi Association. Okay, thanks, Karen. Uh, any members, any questions at this point? You'll have a chance later, but uh, just before I bring the trade in, Rob. Yeah, uh, just uh, an obvious one, really. Um, what if somebody chooses to sit in the front passenger seat where there's no protection at all? Um, um, so we, it, uh, ooh, hello. May I Can you hear me? Yes, I heard yeah. you, Rob. So I, I did ask Kirsty if she could uh, answer the question. So, in terms of um, sitting in the front passenger seat, there's um, a driver would have the right to refuse a fare um, if there were reasonable grounds to do so. Um, and I think in in this instance, we would probably take a, a sympathetic view in that it, it would seem that it would be reasonable grounds. I mean, we see each case would be judged on its own merits, but it, it would seem that that would be the route that we would take, is that it, it, it would be reasonable to refuse a fare. Okay. If there's no, uh, Jane. Um, in public, on public, a lot of public transport now, um, passengers are uh, enforced to wear masks. Would this apply in the taxi, with or without the screen? Yeah, yeah. I believe it does. Yes, but uh, yeah. can you yeah. confirm that? Yes, um, it's been mandatory since Monday. It was brought in that um, passengers must wear a screen, wear a mask. Sorry, within um, taxis and private hire vehicles. Okay, thanks. Any further questions at this point? Don't feel you've got to ask now. You can come in later, but once we've heard from the uh, the trade, if um... sorry, I can't see everybody on my screen. N nobody else indicating. If not, then um, can I? I don't know who wants to speak first. Whether um, Mike or Mandy would like to um, address the committee. Um, good morning, Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. Uh, good morning. I'm quite I'm quite happy to kick it off. Uh, my name is Mike Moore. I'm the owner of A to B Taxis, based in Barry in the Vale of Glamorgan. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to speak today, although it seems a little bit weird looking at all these faces on a on a computer screen. Uh, I've been campaigning for screens in 
private hire and taxis since early April uh, with no success. Um, we, we've taken our responsibilities very serious during this COVID-19. Some members have already indicated whether masks uh, and front seat passengers are one thing or another. Just to give you some idea, uh, we stopped all front seat passengers traveling in all of our vehicles very early on. We also, uh, the, the regulations changed on Monday, whereas driver and passenger have to wear masks. So all drivers wear masks, but we also provide masks for passengers. Some may have not forgotten to bring one, some may have lost one and the like. So we, we actually provide masks for, for, for passengers. We've sanitized our vehicles before and after every single journey. Every driver is supplied with sanitizer. The same sanitizer Transport for Wales are using on their buses and their train and, and their and their trains and the like. The councils, local authorities, up and down the country since April have been given their private hire hackney carriage drivers the opportunity to fit screens. This is very important, as we all know during this pandemic, any extra level of protection is gonna save lives. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about people's lives. These drivers, like many other businesses throughout the Vale of Glamorgan, have suffered unbelievably. Their income has gone from to zero. We have a large, um, uh, Asian population, taxi drivers, uh, who were quite vulnerable. As we know, listening to the media and all the scientists reports and, uh, and, and the like. Cardiff have taken a sympathetic approach, like licensing um, up and down the length and breadth of the UK. They understand the need to protect people. Yes, there's risks. There's risks in everything we do. There's risks in coming to work in the morning. None of us have faced COVID-19 before. We have, we need, we desperately need these in our taxis. We're not asking you to pay for them. These are gonna cost hundreds of pounds in some cases to be fitted. And the trade will have to sort that out themselves. But every request I've been met with a brick wall, an absolute brick wall. It's taken me on occasions 13 days to get a response from licensing. Absolutely. It's driven me insane. Cardiff spent four and a half hours on the 15th of this month debating this very issue. And they had the common sense to make amendments to allow drivers to have these fitted. I'm asking, please, please, please look at the report, Cardiff. Look at the questions and the answers that were asked. They had three times as many members. They had Unite Union with them. They asked all the right questions. I'm just a local businessman trying to survive like lots of other local businesses in the town and i'm asking i'm asking you to help us adopt the same policy as cardiff and other local authorities within wales i believe are allowing i believe are allowing um temporary screens even though that wasn't mentioned by kirsty uh but please adopt the same policy as Cardiff. Thank you. Sorry, uh, I was muted. Thank you, Mike. Um, I can't see Mandy, but I presume she's um, 
able to address the committee? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, as Mike says, um, the, it, it appears there is some confusion over sending out the consultation. Um, I myself didn't receive a copy of the consultation um, and I only was aware of this report uh, last Friday when a copy of it landed on my door. So it's been it's been all go be, you know with the with the, the few trade that we've been able to talk to um, to actually get to this meeting. Um, I, I note, Chair, that you mentioned that Progend adopted the policy, um, but can I please ask Kirsty, how many trade members were present at that meeting in Progend? I think you, you're muted, Kirsty. Sorry. We had no um, trade members attend, but we did have um, a response to the consultation. How many responses? We had one response. Okay, thank you. Um, there isn't a great trades association in Bridgend, and that's probably, Chair, why the policy went through um, as is. Um, in Cardiff, there was a huge response to the policy, where the trades um, actually got members of Unite, etc., Hackney Carriage Associations, um, to come in and look at this policy, um, it, it, you know, in full. Um, some members are clear. Firstly, would it be possible to tell us um, what the amendments were in Cardiff? I think all Remember, members have had. Um, yeah, sorry. So I think all members have had a copy of the uh, the amended or a track and changed um, version of the policy, which um, shows the amendments from Cardiff. I think you've also had a, a copy of that, have you, Mandy? Yes, I have, uh, but I, I, I just want to make sure that the, the members are fully aware of the variation in the policy in Cardiff to the one that's being proposed by the Vale. Chair, Chair, can I come in and say that if you like, I can ask my colleague who was the technical support to share the screen and to put that on, on the screen. It definitely has been sent to all members and it has been placed on the website, but if, if you like, we can actually share it on the screen if you wish. Okay, um, can I just ask uh, Mandy then, do you want to go through this, go through the, the policy and pick out each each change and uh, and discuss each yeah. change? Is that? Yeah. Well, that's what, I'd like the, that's what I'd like the officer to do, Chair. Okay, can we, um, can we get the policy up on the screen? Great, it is. We've all gone very small now, but never mind. I was small in the first place. Um, <laughs> Wish I was. I, I think so. If we if we scroll through the policy, um, this is the one with the track. Is this the one with the track changes on it? Uh, yeah. It is chair. Yeah. Uh, so then we can look at uh, each individual um, point and the the changes that are on there. Um, so. For members' benefit, then um, paragraph ten. There's a, a deletion and um, an addition to ten, which is it did read: drivers are advised to obtain independent confirmation from the vehicle manufacturer, MIRA or comparable body, or and their insurer. And it's been amended to: drivers are advised to contact the licensing authority before incurring the expense of installing a screen, which may not be compliant and may be unsafe. Um, Okay, um, up to the next to the next uh, change. Okay, the the next one um, it says a device must be did say a device must be oops, right the device must be purpose built um, to use as a safety screen and it's been amended to the device must be manufactured as a safety screen and the. Um, and point B has been deleted. This was uh, that it does not wrap around the driver's seat and create a partition between the front two seats in addition to the rear cabin area. I think um, that was discussed with the question that um, Councillor Crowley asked, but uh, that's been deleted from the Cardiff version. Um, in then um, subparagraph one, uh, not put passengers and or the driver. 
at any unnecessary risk rather than additional risk. The down again then, and screens must be, it did say professionally and securely fitted. It now just says screens must be securely fitted. Uh, up again, right, it's a bit longer one this time. Uh, your insurance will still be valid if you fit the screen. This, this sorry, um, can we go back, go down a little, um, a little bit? Right. If you wish to fit a protective, no, there, there, stop. <laughs> if you wish to to fit a protective screen, you will need to apply to the council. That's uh, that's obviously would uh, would say the veil with us, providing confirmation that and um, B, your insurance is still valid if you fit the protection screen, and then C. Um, the product to be installed is compliant with government industry regulations, will not compromise the safety of the vehicle. In circumstances where the license authority has safety concerns with the installation, you may be required to subject the screen installation to further testing by a relevant independent vehicle testing body that is recognized and approved by the license authority who can test the safety and suitability of the screen and installation process for your specific model of vehicle. Please note that an MOT test is not a relevant independent test. So that, that's the, the new bit and the, uh, the piece that's been um, deleted is the product to be installed is compliant with government regulations so will not compromise the safety of the vehicle and is approved by Myra or <coughs> body for use in the UK. And um, point D has also been omitted, which is you agree to remove the protective screen in less than 21 days after the date the Welsh Government officially declares an end to the current social distancing restrictions re relating to COVID-19. Uh, and then point 18, now that this one, th there's a, a problem with this because it doesn't quite read right. Um, it's, it's, I think the bit that's been deleted, uh, once the petition or screen is installed, the vehicle owner must email the licensing section with the following, should still be in. And then um, point A would be the certification from the installer or request for an inspection by authorised licensing officer to provide, to prove that the installation is compliant with, um, and then there's a list, if we go down, of what it needs to be compliant with. So that there's just, I think there's a bit of a typo in there, which needs, if, if we were to adopt, it needs to be uh, sorted out. And the next point then is um, the re relevant UN EC EU standard for an original equipment type approval test covering interior fittings, any screen installation that has been fixed to the vehicle in such a way as it may affect the vehicle's structural integrity or the safe operation of the vehicle's supplementary restraint system, airbags, should be approved by a relevant independent vehicle testing body that is recognized and approved by the licensing authority who can test the safety and suitability of the screen and installation process for your specific model of vehicle. Please note that an MOT test is not a relevant independent test. And there's a, a paragraph which has been deleted, um, which was replaced with that, which is the relevant uh, UN ECEU standard for an original equipment type approval test covering interior fittings, any screen installation that has been fixed to the vehicle in such a way as it may affect the vehicle's structural integrity or the safe operation of the vehicle supplementary restraint system, airbags, should be approved by Myra, Millbrook or other comparable independent product engineering, testing, consultancy and certification organization. So I think it, it's just, it's altering um, who needs to be, um, who needs to actually approve the, uh, the fitting of the screen. Um, okay, and I think no, there's one more, um, and then there's an extra 20, the council may mandate the removal of screens at a later date. Any decision to remove screens will be considered at a future public protection committee meeting and will subject the consultation with the trade before a decision is made. I think that replaces the, the uh, previous thing which I read out, which said that they would have to remove 21 days after um, COVID restrictions are taken off. So it's... Um, it's basically saying that we won't prejudge that. We'd uh, wait and make a decision at the time. So I think those are, that's all the, the changes that Cardiff have made. Um, I reading through it, I believe it's probably um, making the uh, the, pol the policy of, of abiding by the policy slightly less onerous than what the original policy was. So um, Mandy, do you want to come back and say anything at this point? Yes, please, Chair. Um, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, members, those 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 amendments to the proposed policy 
um, would appear to make it possible for screen for drivers to be able to uh, fit screens into vehicles. Um, the original policy was too onerous and unobtainable. It was unachievable uh, to be able to get the, to, to get the screens in the vehicles with the proposed policy. It would have cost in excess of two thousand pounds for testing of each screen, et cetera, et cetera. It, it is just far too onerous when there are much more achievable ways of fitting these screens safely. Um, and I would just like to say that if, if members choose to adopt uh, the proposed policy, um, then the trade in the Vale are going to be severely disadvantaged uh, because our neighbouring authority, Cardiff, are going to be able to fit screens. Um, and, and, you know, it, as Mike has pointed out to you, these are unprecedented times. Nobody saw this coming, and we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Um, and and every, every small step you can take to protect passengers or drivers is, is absolutely vital. But basically, we're asking for a level playing field with Cardiff. And for mem you know, I'm asking that members really seriously consider adopting the amendments that Cardiff uh, have made to the policy. There's one thing Mike didn't mention, and Mike, are you still there? Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, I'm still here, sorry. Right. Um, is the amount of work that Mike has done uh, in relation to sourcing safety screens um you know he's, it's been a bit relentless to be quite honest the amount of work that he's done in sourcing these screens and you know making sure that they're safe etc cetera, etc cetera. i don't know if you'd like to tell committee a bit about that mike so com committee can understand that it's not just going to be a bit of plastic from b and q that's going to be stuffed on the back of a headrest or something thank you thanks man you know, speaking with lots of insurance companies for a start to make sure that um, they were happy, we were compliant, our insurance uh, wasn't going to be compromised. I spoke to, I want to say, possibly six local companies. I've, uh, I had five prototypes made. I've sent photographs to licensing. I've sent um, um, the specification sheets that went with these sheet, uh, with these um, screens to licensing. Um, I've since actually found a company within the Vale of Morgan who were desperate to do it because, again, like every other business, they're they're looking for work. So I've actually now spoken to a a, a company within with, within Barry, the, the Vale of Morgan, who could produce these at a relatively <coughs> decent cost and make them affordable. You know what I mean? We're quite happy for our vehicles to be um, inspected and tested, and nobody wants to fit a death trap. Nobody wants to. Uh, potentially be responsibility for an injury to a to a customer we just want the the rights to protect ourselves and more so the rights to protect the customer you know what I mean they're frightened they've been stuck in their homes for the last three or four months and now they need to get back out and they might want to get on a crowded train or a very busy bus they might choose to you know what I mean I'm hoping they do choose to take uh, a, a more local transport, such as a, a, a taxi. Um, so yeah, uh, you know I mean? I'm I'm pleading with you to to take the sympathetic uh, approach to this. Everything comes with a risk, but this COVID has shocked us all. We've all heard of horror stories. And we've had a nurse in Barry. I've had a very, very close friend of mine. The longest surviving COVID patient just came out before his 60th birthday. 
we all know of somebody that's been affected through this uh, uh, COVID. And so, look, I, I do want to wrap it on. And uh, you, you've heard our arguments. You know where we're coming from. You're the people that make the decision. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mandy. Any any members? Any questions for Mike and Mandy first before we just go on to um, anyone want to speak? Any any questions? No. Okay. Uh, who would uh, anyone would like to um, to speak on the matter then? Margaret. Can I ask Richard for the what would happen if we went against what's being recommended here and we did change the to Cardiff? Could I ask what that would entail? Nothing really. I, I don't know if you can. You hear me? Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, it's a decision that you're making. Um, Cardiff have considered this independently. They will have taken on board, um, you know, the view of the trade, with which you know they're operating as a city centre. So they would have considered the matter on, on its own merits, and it, it's entirely a matter for you. I mean, what the officer is saying in terms of um, supporting her recommendation is that if you were to do what Cardiff had done you would be adopting a more relaxed policy um, and, and in that officer's view that affords the public less protection. It's entirely a matter for yourselves. Okay, thank you. I think one one point I suppose is that, uh, I, I'll, I'll bring Steph, Stefan in now, I'm just going to make the point following on from what Margaret said. Um, although, as Richard said, it, uh, it the officer may consider that it gives the public um, less protection um, than the the uh, the policy, the DPPW policy. But uh, I suppose if the policy is slightly relaxed, it means that there's a lot more people are going to fit these screens. So it does give a lot more more uh, will give a lot more members of the public protection yeah. from screens, which would otherwise not be fitted. Um, Stefan. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have to say, for me, this is a no-brainer. Um, uh, with masks being worn screens fitted um that's good enough for me i move that we adopt Cardiff's proposals um this will speed things up i would second that chair as well okay any any other members wish to speak or anybody wish to have a, a contrary view on this i haven't got I, I another can... view yeah you I haven't, haven't got, got a different view. I haven't got a different, but I want to know why did the officer not tell us about Michael Moore sending these things in? And we could have discussed that as well, because I'd like to know everything about what these screens does and what they don't and where we can get them from. But I am going to go with uh, Councillor Stephen William. OK, thank you, Margaret. I think one point which I, I hadn't considered um, before listening to the members of the trade, and Mandy mentioned it, is the level playing field with Cardiff and that you know our, our drivers and Cardiff drivers are, a lot of the time are competing for the same trade. And uh, it, it, it would seem sensible um, to allow our drivers to be on a level playing field with, uh, with Cardiff drivers. Um, I think there's a lot more competition with Cardiff than there ever is with Bridgend. And uh, yeah. uh, although the although this policy was drawn up by the uh, the licensing technical panel and uh, and approved by the directors of public uh, protection in Wales, um, nothing's perfect, and uh, there's always uh, you know we can always amend things to uh, to improve them. Um, I've got no issue with supporting what um, Stefan and uh, as proposed and Leighton has seconded. The only point I would make before we vote on it was I did point out that there's a, a mistake around point 18. I yeah. think it's quite easy to pick out of there what it is meant to say. So if we do approve the policy, it's approved with the with the proviso that that is uh, made uh, to sound as it should sound, rather than uh, it's just a bit strange at the moment. So um, agreed, chair. Agreed. Are there any any other members wish to speak? Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll go through and uh, and we'll do what basically what is a recorded vote. Nobody's indicating they wish to speak, so I'll. Uh, I can find my list of names. We'll run through it again. Okay, um, myself. Uh, you, I'm. Uh, excuse me, Chair. Chair, can you yeah? make it clear what we're voting on, please? Are we voting for the Cardiff okay, well, policy the, the, or the Vale? The, the, what has been proposed by Councillor William is that we adopt the Cardiff policy. 
So if you're for, you're for the Cardiff policy. If you're against, um, you're against the Cardiff policy, um, basically. So um, I'm, I'm going to vote for in support of Councillor Williams' uh, recommendation. Um, Councillor Aviat? Four. Councillor Charles? Four. Councillor Drake? Four. Could you hear me? Councillor McAffer? Yes, yeah. Councillor McAffer? I'm not sure if Councillor McAffer is still present. I can hear something sort of somebody trying to croak an answer in the background, I think, perhaps. But, uh, but, um, Councillor McCaffrey, if you are, um, if we are communicating with you, could you send a message through to say whether you're for or against to uh, Karen, please? Uh, Councillor Moore? At four. Councillor Morgan? Four. Uh, Councillor Norman? Four. Councillor Nugent Finn? Four. Councillor Rowlands, uh, second. The motion, so I presume he's in favour. Uh, Councillor William proposed it, so I presume he's in favour. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. And Councillor Wright. Four. Okay, well, that's clearly um, carried. Can I interrupt? Uh, Councillor Crowley, I was just going to say. Yeah, okay. I'm full. Sorry, sorry, uh, Rob, missed, missed you out there. I crossed your name off earlier. But, uh, yeah, thanks um, for that. Um, so it's uh, that's a new, other than Kath, Councillor McCaffer, who um, we can't get hold of, but uh, she had, so in that case she hasn't voted either way. It's a unanimous vote to adopt um, the chair, the as amended. Chair, chair, chair. Um, just to invite Catherine on the chat yeah. to say that she's for. So it is it is a unanimous decision of the of the committee then. So yes, um, chair. I was just about to come in. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of the meeting. Um, can uh, Chair, I... Chair, can yeah. I further come in? It is a further recommendation in the report um, regarding the delegation to the Head of Shared Regular ser Services. Um, yeah, let me find it. It's, the, the recommendation is that the committee approve the decision to approve a screen for use in taxis or private hire vehicles is delegated to the Head of Shared Regulatory Services. Um, is I won't go around every member again and ask, but could any any anyone indicate if they're not in favour of that uh, second part of the recommendation? Uh, question. Stefan, yes. Does that in any way go contrary to what's just been approved? No. No. No, I, I, okay. I don't think it does. Um, okay, fine. Because basically it, it's still a, the licence in... License departments still have to approve these screens. This, this has just given us a, a policy to work on to um, to come to a decision. So um, somebody still has to make that decision, and we certainly don't want every vehicle coming back to a committee to make a decision on whether we have a screen for it. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Can I just Mammy? ask one question? It's in in the, in relation to um, if 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 a screen is refused. Um, if you know if a vehicle is, is fitted with a screen and produced uh, to licensing uh, for approval um, and that screen for some reason the officer decides um, is refused uh, what happens then do we have um, you know uh, I'd have to, um, yeah I'll have to refer to uh, Richard on this one I think is it does it would it come as an appeal to committee or would it or would it be um, no. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 I mean, the, the policy's there, and my reading of the policy was that ultimately it's a matter for for the licensing team as to whether or not they approve that. Um, obviously, if there was, I would imagine, a recommendation and there was a change to that screen, um, it, it's working with the tradesmen until both parties are happy that, that you know the screen is correct. So I mean, it's going to come down to to you know, satisfaction, you know, from, from an expert point of view to a certain degree, it, it wouldn't be right for members to be able to decide whether or not something was, um, my understanding of the policy is that that rests with the licensing team to determine. Okay, but is there a right of appeal 
in relation to whatever decision is made by the licensing, by whoever inspects the screen? No, not, not on my reading of the policy. Um, of course, you would have a decision of a local authority and any decision of a local authority is challenge challengeable by way of judicial review. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I said that brings us to the end of the meeting. Can I can I thank uh, Mandy and Mike for coming and joining us? Can I thank all the officers who've made I think this meeting go reasonably uh, well. I'm quite pleased with the way it's um, it, it's gone. The, not not necessarily the decisions, but the way the meeting has actually gone. Everybody's had a chance to to partake and and speak. Um, so and thank you all to the members for uh, for being at the meeting today. Um, so I don't know if anyone else wishes to say anything, or otherwise, um, that's it from me. I'd just like thank to thank members for considering uh, the, the amendments, and it's going to make a great deal of difference to members of the trade within the Vale. Thank you. Kirsty okay. wants to come in. Kirsty. Hello. Um. Thanks. I just need to confirm that you said point eighteen. Yeah. Um, you weren't happy with the wording on that point. Yeah. Maybe you can, what 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 is it that you want can in we, there? Can we um can can we put it can Matt, Matt put it back up on the um on the screen? Um, excellent. I can't move it. You'll have to move him down a bit. Right. Um. If you start start from um, 17, it says, upon the authority being satisfied that the proposed installation meets the criteria outlined above, you will be permitted to install a safety screen in your vehicle. And then point 18 says, certification from the installer or a request for an inspection by authorised licensing officer to prove that the installation is compliant with. Uh, that, that just doesn't make sense. It, I, what's below it is once the petition or screen is installed, um, I, th I think that that's been crossed out, is wrongly crossed out because otherwise it just doesn't read right. I don't know if anyone agrees think, with me. I think it was sorry. I think it was changed in order to accommodate an earlier change in the policy. Um, if I can just try and find that, which says that screens, because um, it in the DPPW one, it said that they must be professionally fitted. So it was just to accommodate the fact that it didn't need to be yeah. professional. It's just that it doesn't it doesn't actually make sense as it's written. Okay. So Can you I come in? It, 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 well, I won't say anything. Once the once the petition or screen is installed, the vehicle owner must email the licensing section with certification from the installer or re, or a request for an inspection, rather than that that sentence in in eighteen as as amended just doesn't uh, okay. doesn't sound so right where it is. Read that sentence yeah. and put the. Yeah, okay. I don't think it, I, I think it's easy enough for the officers to work out um, what it should say and to and to get it um, put into a, a more user friendly form. Then, okay. everyone happy with that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, have a good uh, good August. I think it starts in the next day or two, doesn't it? So, <laughs> if we haven't had a long enough break already, we've got another month off now. <laughs> So um, thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.